So today's lecture we have to learn about the sericulture. You should know that there is a sericulture, the rearing of the silpa for the production of a raw silk. You need to have to see that particularly the silk threads which is uh, give the economic importance for there are the uh, farmers, those who increases their economics and uh, we have to sign by there are the uh, rare, in there is the many farmers, there is the side business of as like a farms. So we have to see that the origin of the silk, it is first of all uh, discovered by the China. After that we have to see that the, there are the four kind of the silks, there are the four type of the silks. In which we have to see, there are the India which is the first in rank, there are the production of the mocha silk. And is, we have to see that the Kassar silk it is the second in uh, rank, uh, there is the fifth in the production of it all over the world. So we have to see that the mulberry silk when there is the produce, there is the India, it is the fifth all over the world. And you should know that the mulberry silk it is a more important for the production of a mini type of a cloth. Those are the produced by there is the silk. So basically we have to see that when we have to culture or the rare the silk worm for the production of a raw silk, in which there are these uh, silk worms, there is a uh, to see that there is a whole metabolic type of insects. When we have to learn about the taxonomic study or uh, there is the taxonomic position of these insects, it is included the phylum orthopoda class insecta or the lipid of terra, the family bombicidae, the genus bombix, and the species is the mora. Next one we have to see that there are the in India, there are the four kind of insects. In which we have to see that the basically these insects we have to classify into there are the two families. The first one is the bombicidae and the second one there is the cytopidae. There are the four kind of insects which are the produced by there are the particular type of rearing species. The first of all we have to discuss all that the one with the silk worms. These are the bombics more species we have to use for the, the rearing of a production of a that is the mulberry silk. You need to have to see that this type of a silk worms it is a fully domesticated species which is we have to rear in the human interference in there is a particular rearing mouse or any other habits. We have to see these are the commonly uh, seen that there are the cocoons which are the type produced and there is the type of a silk. So basically these silks when they have to produce it is a reliable and there is the cocoon it is a white and there are the creamy white in colors. It is a producing uh, states in India. There are the uh, particularly most striking there is the West Bengal, Kashmir, Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh. This is state which are the produced in mulberry silk. So when you have to see that the position of the mulberry silk production in the India, it is the fifth in all over the world. Then uh, another family we have to see that the Sachimidae. It consists of there are the uh, there are the three different type of the silk productions. The particular the Tassar silk worms, Mogha silk worms, and Ira silk worms. When you have to see the Tassar silk worm, it is uh, used the most plant. There is the Asar and there is the Abjo, which is the common name of there are the Bihar and Orissa and also the Madhya Pradesh. There are the Asar and Abjo. The second we have to see these species. When we have to see it is a wild uh, type of a silk worms. We have to do not rear in the human interference or the culture in there in the rearing house. There is the this silk when you have to produce it is a real bar and there is the cocoon is a brown or copper color, which is the mostly produced in there in the Bihar, Odisha, and Madhya Pradesh in India. There is the mocha silk worm, there are the specific of the rear of the culture, there is the Aitharia Asama, there is the main host plants, there is the som and sodu, there is the semi-domesticated species, the silk which is also the reliable and uh, there is the cocoons, it is the golden yellow colors. It is a particular produced in there in the Asam state. The last one that is the fourth one type of a silk, which is the produced by the era silva, it is the attackers resin, which is we have to see that the species. There is the main host plant, there is the cast, uh, castor plants and there is the cassia. These are we have to see that the domesticated species and in unreliable silk, the cocoons when we have to produce it is a white in color. The second we have to see that it is produced in there in the Assam and many other states in there in the India. The particular we have to see that the mulberry silk worm we have to use there is the complex more species. It is a fully domesticated and feeds on there in the mulberry plant leaves. There is the larva, it is a borosius eater. The sum also we have to see that it is a univoltine or the multi-voltine species. They produce the renewable silk and all over the parts. It is a we have to see that the position of India, it is a rare on the culture, there is the Maharashtra, Andhra Pradesh and also the West Bengal. These are the uh, two different photographs which shows that there are the adults of a mulberry silk worms, there is the complex mora and there is the larva stage, we have to also known as the silk worm or the caterpillar stage. The second one we have to see the era silk worm, there is a larva species which is the rare, it is the attackers resin. 
This facility is also the domesticated species. We have to produce the unreliable and the white silk. There is a the era silk moss or there is the there is a larvae which is the feeds on the particular the castor and the casserole plants. It is a multi-oldan species and produces the unreliable white silks. And there is the rare daughter culture in that in the Asa. The third one that there is the Tasan silk worm. We have to call that the Anthurium mylita this species. We have to generally see that in the wild habitats. There are the particular the Bihar and Orissa state, these peoples, they collect only the cocoons in there in the wild habitats. And uh, the fruits of the various plant species, particularly it is a reliable or the brown copper in color silk, which is the produced by the Tassar silk worm. This species is the Anthurium mylita. The last one, fourth type of these uh, silk, there is the Mocha silk, which is the produced by the Anthurium Assam, particularly in this state in India, the Assam, which produces the such a type of this silk. It is a semi domesticated species. Because of you have seen it to produce the reliable golden yellow cells and it fits on the some, uh, there are the common plants. We have to see that the solo plant leaves, so that is, we have to call it the semi domesticated species. When I will next time discuss on there in the life cycle of this uh, Bombex mori, in particular, we have to relate it in our syllabus, there is the Bombex mori species. We have to see that there is the life cycle. When we have to discuss on there in the others, the particularly, there is the split of the others morphological characters. These adults, when you have to see that, the adults which are generally measures about the 2.5 cm long and there is the wingspan, it is approximately 4 cm to 5 cm when the wings are the expand. There is a silk moss, the particular the complex mora, it is a horometabolous type of insect which passing from there are the, all these uh, stages, there is a particular egg, a larva, pupa and the adult stage and they complete their life cycle within the few days. So we have to call these holometabolous type of insects. When we have to see that the morphological characters of these adults silk worms, it shows that the body given into the three different parts, there is the head, thorax and abdomen. The head consists of there are the bushy antennae, there are the compound eyes and there are the we have to see the mandibular type of the mouth parts. In the thorax region, we have to see that they show there are the three different segments, there is the prothorax, mesothorax and metathorax, which divides there are the three different parts and consist of the three pair of the legs and the two pair of the wings. The second we have to see that there is the abdomen, it is generally we have to see that the male are smaller than there is the female box and it consists of there are the seven visible segments. In the female, we have to see that there are the eight visible segments, we have to see that. When we have to see the coloration pattern of these adults, both it is a color, somewhat there is the creamy white color and the entire body which is covered by there are the smooth bristles and there are the hairy patterns. So there is a we have to see that there are the extra morphological characters of these adults. The adults which are proud to see that it is a diocese, it means that the sexes are separate and it shows that internal fertilization. Next one we have to see that when these adults we show there is a maturation, we show there at the population or there is the fertilization. After that the fertilization, the female walks within the four to five days, they lay the eggs. These eggs, when we have to see that the single female was after the fertilization which is led by there are the 300 to 400 eggs. When we have to see that these eggs, there is the surface of a mulberry leaves or any egg sheet in there is a particularly the different type of a rearing houses. We have to obtain the eggs which are the uh, led by the female moth in there is the paper sheets. So we have to also call that there is the egg sheet. These eggs are very tiny, there is a small and they very minor. It is a yellowish in color, particularly some spherical insects, and it consists of there are a sufficient amount of a yolk, which is the helpful for the other, particularly the development of a embryo. The egg which is the covered by there are the thin chitinous, there is the shell, which is the protecting the inner developing inside the embryo. So we have to see that particularly these eggs, we have to see that there are the two types of eggs. There are the normal eggs and there are the diaposites. In our uh, scientific language, we have to call that hibernating eggs and non-hibernating eggs. We have to see that the hibernating eggs, which means that which goes for the another diapos. These female moths which lay the egg in this spring season, they hatch out only in the next spring season. Such a type of eggs, we have to call that the hibernating eggs or the diapos eggs. The second type of eggs, there is the normal eggs which do not show that or they derive that there is any diapos. They simply or there is the continuously show that the hatching within the 10 to 12 days, such eggs we have to call that the normal hibernating eggs or a normal eggs. After the 10 to 12 days, there is the uh, multi-voltine or the bi-voltine species. 
this h which is the h out into the other the small minute white color larvae it is also commonly known as a caterpillar when you have seen that it is mature within the 10 to 12 days this larvae which shows that approximately 4 to 6 mm in size dark black or brown in color and the entire body which consists of they are the small hairs so that's why we have to call it is a caterpillar stage during the larval stage they have to show that approximately 30 to 40 days for their uh, span which are the developed and it shows that there are the 4 to 5 moles during this molding we have to see that they show that the gradual changes and it becomes into 6 mm into that is 8 cm when we have to see that after the gradual changes or there is a the molding the fully mature larva we have to see that it is a ripening and it shows there is a golden yellow color and it becomes into the 8 cm long. That time we have to see that it is a larva which shows that there are the different type of body parts, the head which is the distinct which consists of there is the mandibular front parts and consists of there are the hook like structure there is the spinner head which is the helpful for there is the spinning thing particularly the cocoons. When we have to see that in the larva, there is the fifth thing the larva, they have to the development of the silk glands. There is the salivary glands which is the modified into laterally, there is the silk glands which produce that, there is the silk and uh, which is the spin by, there are the after 3 to 4 days, side to side mouths, when we have to provide it, there is the dry cocoon edges are also we have to call that in the mouth edges or the chandrika that time it's been the cocoons on this dry surface in yeah? there is the mouth edges or right? there is the chandrika when the cocoon there is the form these are we have to call that the larva which is the enclosed inside these cocoons these cocoons it is a spherical or the oval shape and which are we have to see that there are the particular thing for, for the production of a rosin the cocoon stage we have to also call that is the resting phase in there is the pupil stage that time the pupil we show there are the many gradual changes there are some organs in the larval stages which is the show the dissolution and it becomes into there are the some premature pupa or there is the mature pupa the pupil stage which is approximately 10 to 15 days and during that stage this pupa which becomes into the adult stage when we have to see that when the products the cocoons inside that within the 4 to 5 days the cocoons which are we have to harvest because of we have to see that when the cocoons which is the peers by these uh, the people at the adult stage these cocoons do not have the any market value so before that we have to show that there is the harvesting of a cocoon after 10 to 15 days this is a few part which becomes into the adult stage and there are the amount uh, these adults when there is the emerge from the cocoons which is a we have to call the adults we have to see that there are the adults which show that the sex is separate and show that the eternal fertilizer. So they have to complete their life cycle within the 55 to 60 days. And it is a domesticated species. We have to discuss on that in the mulberry seeds. These are we have to see that it is a helpful for the farmers to produce the raw seed through the help of a there the cocoons. Next lectures we have to discuss on there the cultivation of a mulberry plants. Okay, thank you students.